Indiana Task Force One is back home after aiding a search and rescue efforts in Surfside, Florida, following a condo collapse. Yeah, the 17-day deployment, one of the longest for that group. News 8 Sierra Hignite is looking back on their mission, Sierra. Yeah, so structural collapses and responses to disasters like hurricanes, there are two types of deployments that are typical for Task Force One, but the trip to Florida was the first time the crews had to deal with both disasters at the same time and made the mission to recover missing people from the rubble that much more challenging. Indiana Task Force One headed into its mission in Surfside, Florida, feeling confident and prepared when group members packed the buses on June 30th. But getting there and seeing stuff in person, it changes things. It's, it's, it's hard to imagine what it's going to look like when you get there and then you see it. And it's just uh, impressive to see something of that magnitude. A task that was originally slated to take two months. Seeing the pictures on the news, we knew kind of what we were getting into. But um, everybody's still in the rescue mindset. Crews were able to complete in three weeks with the proper manpower and equipment. It was like a needle in a haystack, but um, the coordinated efforts, um, the command and control, working with the Israelis, um, and then everybody that was there before us, they had plans in place. The team from Israel was able to offer intelligence and technology that allowed crews to locate and dig within a few feet of where victims were buried under the rubble. But the conditions were working against them day after day. More of a physical and mental status is what I worried about is uh, uh, because conditions were very difficult with uh, the structure being in the condition it was, the weather, um, you know, high 90s, 90% humidity, storms popping up. Once the remainder of the building came down, Task Force Leader Jay Settergren said crews were able to work more efficiently. But once that came down, we were able to do a lot more of the area um, as far as the search and recovery went. And it was huge for us because that was in the back of my mind. If that came down while we were working, it was not going to be good. With millions of pounds of debris to sift through, heavy machinery saved time as they dug between floors where victims were buried. The tools that were the most helpful were the large machinery, being able to move the large pieces of concrete because uh, those were just a tedious task. If we had to do that by hand, you know, we'd probably still be down there. By the time Indiana Task Force One arrived, there were no survivors, but they were able to find victims and give families closure. Um, it definitely is a huge mental toll um, and physical toll. Like I said, just in the heat and all the other conditions, and then you add on to it what we were doing. Uh, it's very difficult, and I worried about our, our people the whole time we're there. The 80 people who were on the mission from Indiana Task Force One are currently on a mandatory resting period. The first shift of people will go back to work tomorrow. Reporting, I'm Sierra Hignite, Wish TV, wishtv.com, and follow us on Facebook.